Hello everyone, today is day six of our 30 days of watercolor flowers and today we are painting Black-Eyed Susans. Black-Eyed Susans have such an interesting name, but they are a type of daisy with a couple of distinct differences. So first, the center of Black-Eyed Susans is really large. It's really prominent and sticks out really high. It's really textured and fuzzy. They're also known by their very large size and the bright yellow petals. The petals have some slight variations between different types of black-eyed Susans where they'll be orange or kind of brown colors within the petals or they can be just plain yellow. So for the first black-eyed Susan I drew, we're seeing it almost directly from the side. So the center is very prominent and high. We're seeing the petals on the side that is closest to us very well, very prominent. And then those tiny little petals that I made in the back look like they're peeking out from behind that center. The second black eyed Susan I flattened the center a little bit more so that it looks like we're seeing more of the top of the flower and then I have the petals coming out from the back side a little bit more clear and then this last black eyed Susan um, I drew from the side again but with less petals peeking out from the back so it's more of a true side shot. Black-eyed Susans are wildflowers, so I kind of sketched in these scraggly leaves, but then in the end I decided to do um, a more clean, typical type leaf, but I've seen either one of those styles in my reference pictures. All right, we're going to start with the center of this flower. I am picking up a brown color instead of black first, because with watercolor we start light to dark, so if I want some kind of highlight or depth within the center, I'm going to start with a lighter color and for me that's brown. So I'm actually going to place all three centers doing this really textured half circle shape. And this center on the left is a little bit more flat because we're seeing it more from the top. We're going to let those dry while we do the petals. So for the petals, I'm picking up orange and yellow and mixing that together to get a very bright and deep yellow color for these petals. To form these petals, I'm using the very tip of my brush, starting at the base of the center, and then pulling out using the body of my brush until I get the length of petal that I want, and then I'm releasing the pressure so the pressure is lighter using the tip to form the end of the petal. And then some of these petals on the sides just get thinner and thinner and smaller as we go to the back. So the petals on the sides are, you know, from, you're, you're looking at it from the side. So they'll be a little bit more flat and thin. While those petals are still wet, I picked up some yellow ochre and mixed it with orange. Because some of my reference pictures had this beautiful orangey, dark yellow, brown type color right at the base of these petals near the center. And so while my petals are still wet, I'm going to pop that in. Then I'm going to rinse my brush a little bit and with a wet brush, just help that color diffuse into the petals, especially if they've already begun to dry. Now we're going to work on the flower in the upper right. And something I want you to realize about Black Eyed Susans is the petals are really wavy and they're not uniform and there's a lot of them. So you don't really have to think about, oh, I have to only do five petals or they have to be perfectly straight and uniform. You can wiggle them all over the place. I think adding that extra movement really helps it look organic and makes your paintings not feel so stiff. And then once again, I'm going to pick up that orange yellow ochre color and I'm going to add it to the petals before they're totally dry. And some of them will diffuse a little bit more, some won't, and I'm just doing tiny little dots on those petals that are around the back. And then when you go in and rinse your brush off, make sure you tap it dry on the paper towel so that you, are, you have more of a damp brush and not a soaking wet brush that will help diffuse everything without creating water blooms. Now we're going to work on this flower to the left that has most of the petals showing. So the petals around the front are still going to be more prominent, but they're a little bit shorter than the petals of the flowers that we've already done. And then as we bring these petals in the back, they're a little bit 
angled to give the idea that it's pointed up to the left and they're still shorter but they're a lot more visually prominent than the back petals on the flowers we painted already. Now we're going in with that orange yellow ochre color. I'm mixing just a little bit more and if you want to you can skip this step. A lot of the Black Eyed Susans I saw online in reference photos are just beautiful bright yellow and don't really have um, a whole lot of this detail and texture but when you're painting with watercolor anytime you can add contrast or texture or an added element of another color it just gives so much depth to something that could be so plain. Now I'm going to add some yellow to the sap green that is already on my palette to get a little bit of a brighter green color and I'm going to paint the stem nice and straight with a little bit of a curve. Anytime you can add that curve it really adds movement which is necessary for paintings. And then I'm doing my two stroke leaf method where I start with a tiny little stem coming off the main stem and I start with light pressure at the tip push down with the body of my brush until I get the length that I want on the leaf and then I release the pressure coming to the tip of the leaf and then I do the same thing again on the other side leaving a little bit of white space to represent a vein. So with this painting I'm trying to not overload it with leaves but I want it to look visually appealing um, so I'm kind of filling in the gaps thinking where does it need a leaf and then I felt like it needed one more leaf to throw off the very even Steven balance of the three leaves so I added an extra smaller one to give a nice little grouping and balance on the left side. Now while all of my leaves are still pretty wet I'm picking up more of the sap green just to increase the pigment to water ratio that I had going on and then I'm tapping that dark green into my stems and leaves to get some shadowy contrast areas. So right now I'm just kind of plugging it in here and there. You don't want to overwhelm your subject which in this case is leaves. You don't want to overwhelm it with the contrast but without the contrast it lies flat. So then once I put the color in I can wet my brush a little bit, tap it on the paper towel and kind of smooth some of the areas out, taking away some of the paint, uh, making it so that there are some areas with smooth edges, some areas with the harsh lines, but then overall it gives a lot of depth when you're finished. Now we're almost done, but we need to actually give our Susans a black eye. <laughs> and so we need to pick up some black and we're mixing it with the brown that's already on our palette. And I'm going into the center and I'm just creating tons of texture now that we already have our petals in creating tons of texture doing this dotted technique and I'm leaving some of the brown showing through so that it gives a highlight it has the depth that we need because when we're working with watercolor anytime you can have two colors representing one color it gives a lot of depth to the area so we need some of that brown to peek through and with that, our Black Eyed Susans are finished. Now the only thing left to do is add it to the day six spot on our 30 day watercolor flower guide. I kept it simple with just the plain yellow and I love the pop of color it adds to the overall guide. Thank you so much for being here today while we painted Black Eyed Susans for day six. I will see you tomorrow for day seven. Bye.